Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms 38 verse 6 as well as Psalms 82 verse 8. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful scripture, Lord God. Open it up to our hearts, open it up in our minds, Lord God. Give us wisdom and understanding, God. Help us to unearth the treasure that you have here. In Jesus' name we pray. We can do nothing without you, Father God. It's all about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. Psalms 38, verse 6. So this is a Psalm of David. It says in verse 6, I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All the day I go about mourning. So this was one of the ones where he was talking about his physical ailment. He was having um, symptoms of physical sickness and strain. His body was showing it in many different forms, um, burning in his sides, all kinds of symptoms that were, that seemed to almost be symptoms of a spiritual ailment that he was going through. He, uh, he, in some portions of the Psalms, blaming on his um, sin that had caused these things. But in this particular one, he was asking God to not forsake him in this Psalm. And here it says, I am utterly bowed down. So when you're bowed down, it's one thing, but when you're utterly bowed down, you're in your lowest state, right? He was in a, a state of deep despair. It says, I am utterly bowed down and prostrate, like Lee in that prostrate in first that he's seeking God, right? He's laying flat. Um, he's low in a humbled state as well as what seems to be a physical state. But it says all the day I go about mourning. So he's he's in a dark place, right? If you look up that word mourning, one of the words there is actually darkness, right? And this seemed to be all physical manifestations of a spiritual darkness that were going on in him. And he was doing what David does. He was seeking God, right? But this was all really looking inward at himself, right? And and that's something David is very good about. He's very good about self-analysis and how he got himself into this situation and the goodness of God, even in the midst of a negative situation. And so this scripture today is conflated with Psalms 82 verse eight. It says, arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all the nations. So this is actually a, a Psalm of Asaph. And so um, it's talking about the weak and the needy. It is talking about their need for rescue. It is talking about um, uh, not forgetting them, right? And so this particular verse is speaking on the kings of the earth and the rulers and, and saying, you know, arise, O God, and judge the earth, right? Come against these these people who are ruling, who are who are oppressing the needy, who are oppressing the downtrodden. Um, it's asking for basically vindication of the poor in the psalm and and to to remember those people, right? Um, but even in our despair, God is always being lifted up, right? So it says, for you shall inherit all the nations. God is going to inherit all of the nations. And, and, and that's, that is like part of the conflation for today. If you look at David, David is very rich, right? He's very lavishly rich. He is the king of, of Israel, right? He is the king and he's God's man, right? He's rich. He has a high estate and yet he's low and humbled in his situation. Um, and in this um, Psalm, we're talking about poor people people who are of a low estate for people who who are who are who are um, misrepresented or not represented people who are being oppressed by kings so the conflation here today is is really the that God is God over it all right he is the one who's going to arise and judge the earth he is the one who is going to make the low high and the high low the first last and the last first he's the one who's going to see the downtrodden see who 
those who are depressed internally. Yes, he might have been rich on the outside, but he was poor on the inside, which made him a rich in God, right? Um, he he it says, Arise, oh God, judge the earth. When God comes to judge, um, that judge word um has to do with justice, right? And making things just, making um the giving everyone their just due, making sure all things are made right, right? And and God is a great record keeper. We've talked about this many times. He keeps great record. He keeps the books, right? For all of it, for the rich, for the poor, for those who are poor in spirit, those who are prideful, God sees it all. And in the end, he's going to arise and he's going to judge the earth for you shall inherit all the nations. God is going to inherit all all of the nations, whether that is a poor nation, whether that is a rich nation, he is going to judge justly. He is going to judge the earth and what is the, the, the remnant, those who have not forsaken God, those who God has seen and, and kept good records of and, and judged and made right. Um, those that are left, it, they're going to be a part of his inheritance, right? He's going to inherit their nations. He's going to inherit the nations, the people and the land. He's going to inherit it all in the end. Um, but in right now, in the midst of the situation, yes, we might be going through something, whether we have money, whether we don't have money, whether we are in a high place or whether we in a, are in a low place. We have to remember that it all belongs to God. All of this, everything that we stand on, everything that we base our lives on, everything that we do in a daily basis, it all belongs to God right? Surrender it to him. He's going to judge justly in the end. He is going to arise on your situation, whether it be a high situation or a low situation. God is going to arise and he's going to judge the earth. He's going to be a just judge, right? And the only thing you need to have is a covering and that is Christ Jesus. Jesus is the biggest part of this conflation because whether you're high or low, you need him. Whether you're rich or poor, you need him. Whether you are um, uh, clean or dirty, you need him because he needs to come and clean you if you're dirty, right? And, and the only way to be clean is through him. You can't be clean unless you have him wash you. And he washes us with the blood, right? He washes us with his blood. Our sins are covered with his blood. And then he does a continual washing with the water of the word, according to Ephesians, right? So that is the conflation for today that whether rich, whether poor, whether in a high place or a low place, God is God over it all. And he's going to arise. He's going to judge the earth and, and, and nothing will be left unturned, right? Everything will be fleshed out at that time and when he's going to judge the nations and he's going to inherit the nations and and that's all a part of his rulership right and we can take part of it we can be a part of his family we can be a part of his kingdom and we could be rulers within it as long as we have him as our covering rich poor black white um whatever race whatever creed you are you need the covering amen all right, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our strength. Thank you for dying for us and paying the cost for us on the cross. You paid a high price and, and it was worth it to you. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for saving our souls. We accept your sacrifice. Lord Jesus, arise, oh God, judge the earth for you shall inherit all the nations. Lord God, let us be there to see it. Let us be there to witness it. Let us be there at the coronation. Lord God, let us be there and, and giving you praise and being your bride and, and, and worshiping you, God. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as 
their Savior and Lord. Go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father, for doing this for me. Sit on the throne of my heart. Rule over me. Be my Lord. I've been my own Lord for long enough. I give you glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to show you the way. He's going to show you the path to um, take that God has set out for you. Uh, and and it, it's a beautiful path. It's a great way that God has made for you. So don't forsake the Holy Spirit. Don't um, ignore him as he leads you and guides you into all truth listen to his voice. And if you're having a problem listening to his voice, one of the best ways to learn what his voice sounds like is to sit down in his word, read the word and ask him questions and learn how to be quiet and wait for an answer. Um, and wait for that still small voice to tell you the meanings of things. And he's going to lead you in all truth, meaning lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he's going to show you what church home to go to, what job to take, what person to marry. The Holy Spirit is there for you to lead you and guide you. So um, listen to him. The whole, um, Jesus wanted us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves. So that's something important to do, as well as um, being around other believers so that we can stay sharp in, in his word. Um, go out, make disciples of all men, go out and be baptized. These are wonderful things that we can do that Jesus doesn't want us to forsake. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.